So today we're going to paint an American goldfinch on a sprig of lavender. Lavender being the flower of the month and the American goldfinch being the most dramatically coloured bird I think I've seen in a long time. My name's Diane and I welcome you to my studio every day where together we paint lovely paintings in watercolour. So remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you never miss a thing. So let's get back to work on the goldfinch, which is a bright yellow bird with a very striking black wing and cap. And this is my sketch, and I'm going to be working from that uh, to do this painting. So I'll just uh, get my sheet of stretched watercolour paint paper here and um, pop that down there and I'll do the sketch for you, uh, which I'm going to do pretty much like this one here. And uh, then once I've done that, I'll be right back and we can get started. So there's the sketch done. And uh, I'm just going to have a quick word now about the colors we're going to use. Um, I've got here transparent yellow and um, this is quinacridone gold. And so those are going to be the colors for the bird, which is primarily a bright color, bright, bright yellow. And of course we'll be needing some black. Um, which is somewhere around, but uh, I have a bit here on this messy palette, palette there, uh, which will be fine. And I've got some quinacridone purple for the lavender, and the lavender needs a touch of cobalt blue just to soften the, the purpley shade down a little bit. And the leaves of the lavender will be made using cobalt blue mixed with quinacridone gold and a tiny dash of lavender just to give it a slightly more misty look. And there's a possibility that I might also use a couple of watercolour pencils in there to emphasise some of the shapes um, of the flowers and so on and so forth. We'll see how that goes. And in case you're wondering where I get my material from for this painting, because obviously, as you know, I'm not in America, uh, being in France, but I have found some lovely photos on Pinterest or on the internet, actually. That's not even Pinterest. That's uh, all about birds from the American goldfish I finch. Goldfish? identification um, page. So I'd never seen that bird before, so I learned something today and that's a fact. So, okay, I need that for my reference material and so I'm gonna pop him over there, just, just out of the way. Um, okay, so the undercoat comes first and you, there's more than one way of doing this. And sometimes, um, sometimes what I do is I, um, wet the whole bird and uh, go in with the uh, main colour in a kind of um, loose wet in wet kind of way. But because um, this bird has got black wings and a very uh, definite marking scheme, it's not necessarily going to be something we're going to do, um, what's the word, all sort of... Uh, there's a, a word in French called, which is flu, which means kind of, well, fluid, I suppose, that kind of, the idea being that, um, you know, things run in together and, and look wonderful because they're nice and fluid, um, but not gonna do that today. I'm just going to first of all paint the bird in bright yellow. Why wouldn't you? He is indeed a bright yellow bird and, um, Maybe we'll drop a little bit of quinacridone gold in just underneath the wing there for a little bit of shadow. And we'll let that run and see what that does. And I can't do the black for the beak, uh, sorry, for the head and the wing. And I can't do the beak just yet because obviously that's wet. So the next thing to do, I think, is probably to do the, um, the stem of the branch he's standing on. So I'm going to do that in a kind of greyish brown colour. Pick whatever colour you want, doesn't matter at all. It's just a matter of taste. I thought that maybe if we made this uh, twig brownish, it would kind of go with the yellow. Um, but uh, whatever you prefer. And then I'll just drop a little bit of shadow in along the bottom. Um, yes, so now the lavender, 
I'm not going to paint this with any detail. I'm going to just stroke in water for each, uh, the head of each of those lavender flowers. And then I'm going to just drop um, the lavender color in there and let that do what it wants. This is a different way we've painted lavender three. This will be the third or fourth different way of painting lavender. And this is a definitely very flu kind of way of doing it. Talking about flu, my husband had his vaccination, uh, COVID vaccination, um, was it yesterday? Yes, it was yesterday. And we came home and he's like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then he promptly walked into a door and banged his head. He's got an egg on the top of his head um, from that. And just now I went in and he made was making a cup of tea and he said, I feel a bit funny. And I'm like, well, wasn't it yesterday you had your vaccination? Oh yeah, this is what happens when you get old. Anyway, hopefully he's going to be okay because he needs to travel in a day or two. That's why he's been vaccinated. So he can come back, otherwise they won't let him back into the country. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yes, lavender. So yeah, there we go. This isn't looking too bad, is it? Let's hope it doesn't look like a complete disaster at this point like the hair did. Um, but whenever I paint hairs, they always look like complete disasters at the beginning. That's just the way it is. Somehow or another in the end, they turn out okay, usually. That's uh, the stems, and uh, so a little bit of green, but just with a, a dash of, like I said, um, mauve in just to make the leaves less than green. They're um, grey green, aren't they? And I'll drop a bit of that onto my stem as well. So I'm just drawing over with the paintbrush, drawing over the leaf, leaf shapes that I put in earlier. If you want to um, borrow my sketch, you can go to dinanton.com, the website, and uh, you can download the sketches for free. Okay, so that's that part done for now. And I need to find some black because I think it's not completely dry. Okay, I shall do the beak first, which is orange. There we are, and I expect his legs are a sort of pinky orange too, most likely. We can get that kind of color with with the violet and quinacridone gold, that'll give us a kind of light brown. There we are, and hopefully I've got some black on this messy palette here. Yeah, looks like it. I think that's black or black enough anyway. Um, so he's got a Lovely little dark forehead, hasn't he? And I'm going to just pick up a slightly smaller brush.
There we are. We'll leave that like that. Go back to the bigger brush and um, do a, a sort of sideways stroke, kind of a little bit dry brushy like that. So it's kind of broken stroke. I'm not going to go up there to the yellow because that will definitely run. So we'll just even that out a little bit there. And then when it's dry, if I need to, I'll bring that up a bit further. But I quite like that very um, just simple look like that. And we need to put in his eye. And it's very small. There's no way that you're going to get very much in the way of detail. Some people use a pen for the eye. Let's do it like that and let that just happen. So there we are, that's that. Now, do you think that we probably could do with a little bit of, a little bit more violet, do you think, in the, uh, in the lavender? Maybe one or two of them could take a bit, a little bit. It's always fun when you drop colour into colour like that and it runs in an unexpected way. Okay, and then, mm, that's too black. A little bit of green, a little bit of green. Bluey green. There we are then. So that's pretty much getting there. You might want to put a little bit more yellow, slightly darker perhaps. Uh, a little bit here maybe to give him a bit more shape. That's, that's bled in nicely around there. So I'm just going to come back in with The strong yellow. Bring that down to the black a little bit. There we are. And uh, so I think that's enough for the minute. Um, you could, if you wanted to, come in with um, ink and you could uh, give more um, form to the leaves and so on and so forth. There's definitely no doubt that you could do that. You could, uh, or you could just leave it as a really rather nice, soft watercolor. A quick one, make a nice card for somebody. Or a little present, or a nice little project to do with your grandchildren or your children or your friends, or your sister-in-law, or anyone you can think of, really. Um, just make that a little bit darker. If you're worried about painting birds or drawing them, start
start off with some of my downloads and trace over them and you'll soon realize actually it's easier than you think to get pretty close. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. And when that's dry, I think probably I ought to maybe a little bit of gouache. I think probably I won't do that yet because it, yeah, it won't, it won't show yet. But when that's dry, I'll put a couple of lines in there with white gouache. So we'll let that sit and uh, do its thing. So that's the final painting of the American Gold Finch, which is absolutely an adorable bird. I hope you give it a try. And uh, I will say goodbye for now. And I'll see you again tomorrow, no doubt. So have a lovely evening and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Bye bye.